In the previous video, you learned what a factory acceptance test is, why it's important, and how you can power your control panel to make it ready for the test. That was step one and step two. In this video, you'll learn about the next two steps, which are testing the PLC digital inputs and outputs. All of the PLC parts discussed in this video can be ordered via the RealPars Marketplace, the first B2B marketplace for automation engineers. You can find the link to this website in the video description. When performing an FAT for a control cabinet that includes a PLC, like the example we have here, one of the most important things to test is the PLC inputs and outputs. Depending on your application, you may have different input and output cards for your PLC. For this PLC, we have a digital input card, a digital output card, an analog input card, and an analog output card. By the way, you can order all of these PLC modules on the RealPars Marketplace. To do an FAT, you need to test each of the PLC inputs and outputs one by one and make sure everything works properly based on the PLC logic. But you may ask, how can I do this while the control cabinet is still not installed on the site and there are no actual sensors or actuators connected to it? The answer to this question is simulated signals. You need to use simulated signals to perform your factory acceptance test. Don't worry, this is very simple. I'll show you how to do that. You can learn more about signal simulation by watching this video. We'll add a link to the video description as well. Let's start with the digital inputs first. The PLC digital inputs are connected to the upside of these terminals. The other side of the terminals will be connected to the switches and sensors once we take the cabinet to the site. But here, since we have some switches on the control cabinet door, such as mute buzzer, ESD reset, and emergency stop, we have already wired these input devices to the other side of the terminals, and we already have them connected to the relevant PLC digital inputs. Let's start our test with these switches first. We'll start with the mute buzzer input. Let's say that this push button is connected to the first digital input of the PLC. To test this input, all you need to do is to press the push button and see if the LED light for the first digital input on the card turns on. If the LED turns on, it means that the wires from the switch to the PLC are all well connected and everything works properly. If the LED does not turn on when you press the push button, it means that there is something wrong with the wiring. In this case, you need to take the panel wiring diagram and follow the wiring on the panel and fix the issue. If you don't know how to read and follow a PLC wiring diagram, you can watch a previous RealPars video on this topic. You can find the link in the video description as well. Okay, moving on to test the rest of the PLC digital inputs. If the device that will be connected to the digital input is passive, like a simple switch, you can simulate the signal by connecting a piece of wire to the terminal blocks. However, if the device is active, you need to look at the wiring diagram and find the best way to simulate the signal coming from that active device. In most cases, you can make use of a simulator. A simulator is a device like this that can accurately reproduce a sensor output. So if the device that will be connected to the PLC digital input is passive, meaning there is no external power required for the device, you can simulate that using only a piece of wire. If the device is active, you can make use of a simulator to simulate the input signal. After you're done with testing the digital inputs, you can move on to testing the digital outputs. The digital output card that we have sends a 24 volt signal to various devices connected to individual output terminals. A digital output could be connected directly to an output device, like a buzzer or a relay, that could operate an actuator like a motor. To test each output, we just need to give the PLC an input signal and see if the digital outputs change as expected based on the PLC program. 
For example, let's say that the first digital output that we have here is connected to a motor via a contactor. The PLC program logic says when the level switch 1 and level switch 2 are both active, we need to have the motor connected to this output turned on. To test the output, all you need to do is to activate the inputs using simulated signals and see if the contactor on the output will be energized. If the contactor is energized when you do this, it means all the wiring in the PLC logic works perfectly fine for this output. If not, you need to review your wiring using the wiring diagram. You can do the same to test the rest of the PLC digital outputs. Okay, that's it for this video. Now you know how to test the PLC digital inputs and outputs for your control panel. If you find this video useful, please don't forget to hit the like button. This will keep us motivated to create more quality videos on industrial automation topics in the future. It will also help other automation engineers like you to find this video more easily. Just like the previous video, if you have any past experience performing factory acceptance tests, please feel free to share it with the rest of the community here in the comments below. In the final video of this series, we'll discuss the steps required to test your PLC analog input and output cards. Stay tuned! Want to learn PLC programming in an easy-to-understand format? and take your career to the next level, head on over to realpars.com.